thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the uh, committee for a brief opportunity. Uh, the city, I, I will say that uh, the city administration and Dave Goodwin and his team <coughs> have reached out to stakeholders, especially Janice Lyle. Oh, by the way, uh, my name is Bill Foster, 561st Avenue North. Um, and I am the attorney for Janus Live um, and some of the businesses along the Janus block. Uh, the city uh, with city attorney, uh, they're working closely with Janus because I think the city recognizes the importance of, of Janus, that Janus has been there uh, for a very long time. Um, as far as an open air music venue, it's unique to St. Petersburg. Um, it's it's a really a one of a kind in the country, and if you look at your uh, at the map for uh, the noise ordinance, it creates a special noise area, and it's I think it's the only red dot mm -hmm. on the map uh, because it is special. It is unique. It's contributed to uh, the the very cool artsy vibe of downtown, which has attracted development. Uh, so my interest pertains primarily to Janus and the impact of a decibel uh, ordinance would have on that. You, you as a committee asked some very good questions at the last meeting, and I think the primary one was why. Why now? What's driving this? Uh, the city in its report gave three responses, resident concern, development concerns, and health concerns. And, and uh, <clears throat> really relating to, to those resident concerns, I mean, wh when I was on the city council, I was on uh, the, the tenth floor of Bayfront Tower because there was a noise at 2 a.m. in the morning because there was noise coming from frescoes and it was very discernible. You could hear him saying "Happy Birthday" to Betty uh, from frescoes all the way to uh, Bayfront Tower. So um, they used a decibel meter, and, and when, when I was mayor, we had constant issues whether it was Beach Drive, Trist, uh, Witch in the Ale, and things like that. Uh, so you're always going to have some downtown noise, urban noise, uh, and things like that. Janus has had zero complaints uh, as it pertains to noise. And um, uh, when, it, when it comes to the plainly audible standard that was subsequently adopted, it's worked. Noise complaints are down significantly. Uh, when I left office, they were you know, over 3,800. Now they're... Uh, in 2017, they were at 2,500 uh, and change. So uh, the plainly audible standard has worked. Uh, develop, developer concerns, um, it hasn't impacted development downtown at all. There's a crane, there's a tower crane everywhere you look. Uh, there's new development. I don't, I don't agree that there are developer concerns, or if there are, they're concerned with using a a cheaper window material because uh, the Hyatt is a prime example of a developer who understands the setting. Janus may blow a hundred at the sidewalk on, on game night and um, you get across the street and they're in the 80s or uh, potentially 90s. By the time you get up to past the parking garage at the Hyatt on the fifth floor, they're in the low 70s. So uh, with good construction, noise is really not an issue. The, uh, the issues with Janus, uh, primarily, their primary booking agent is Live Nation. Uh, Live Nation books acts, and they're very, very concerned with the impact that a noise ordinance will have on the acts. Not only do the act, the, do the musicians uh, not, not like limit, limitations or constraints because of their sound, uh, but the booking agents have a, have a big problem with the potential of an act being shut down because uh, of some type of uh, noise restriction. The, um, it's not every night, it's not every weekend. There's a big difference between a Bob Seger tribute band and, and Snoop Dogg. Uh, and it's rare, on those rare occasions that noise emanating from Janus might be uh, a little on the loud side. but. Uh, most of the acts are within the confines of the limits. Uh, again, we have a problem or an issue with uh, using a meter. Plainly audible allows you to discern the drum, the band, the dialogue. Um, so the human ear, on a plainly audible standard, you can actually target and identify the source of that.
particular sound. With the decibel meter, there's no <clears throat> distinction between ambient noise, which on a busy street blows, you're, you're starting at 80 decibels uh, on a busy street, uh, and then you've got the sidewalk noise, uh, and then you've got a band on top of that. So we do believe that the decibel meter can't really fil filter out some of these things, whereas plainly audible is a standard that is working in downtown St. Petersburg. A um, little side note, uh, according to your study, McDenton's, uh, I think, blew uh, 90 to 100 on a non-event night where there was simply people on the street, a busy street, 200 people on the sidewalk and two small speakers. Uh, no event, no band, uh, and from the sidewalk already violating an ordinance. So uh, we do question the reasons for the change. Um, the, oh, and, and another thing that we disagree with completely, measuring the violations from the sidewalk or the property line versus at the receiver. Distance, weather conditions, I mean, it makes a difference. And if you're measuring from the sidewalk, you can have clear violations where if you go across the street where the complainant may have been, um, you're well within limits. If you go up to the fifth floor of the Hyatt, you're certainly within limits. The, um, so the measurement, because this thing really is complaint driven, I think the measurement, if you do anything, should be uh, at the receiver instead of at the sidewalk because <laughs> Um, again, on game night, on those rare occasions, we might, we might blow a 90, we might blow a 100, <coughs> but get across the street and um, we're well within limits and, and go up vertically, uh, certainly there wouldn't be an issue. So I don't, I don't want any impact on Janus, which will restrict the vibe uh, of downtown. I don't think we need to fix something that's not broken. Last thing. And thank you again, Mr. Cornell. My client is a good neighbor. He wants to be a good neighbor. Most of you know Jeffrey Knight. Um, he did. He spent a lot of money on his own sound study, and he's working on using his own money to mitigate some of the issues that uh, will keep most of the sound within the confines of the walls and not let it escape. We're working on that now. So uh, he wants to be a good neighbor. He wants to work with you. Um, but again, no complaints against Janice. So. Okay. Thank you, sir.